I can't be 100% sure, but I think what I'm about to share with you in this video, it's at least going to double your productivity, if not 10 exit or even theoretically 14 exit like it did my assistant. So let me explain. The other day we were working on a project that was getting a, a funnel out to test. And funny enough, after 48 hours of testing the funnel variation, we turned it off. But in setting that thing up last Thursday, I had gotten everything ready to go to essentially set the ads live to it. And all of the automations just needed to be hooked up. Now for context, if you know what you're doing, that should take maybe two hours max because it was basically just cloning everything that we already had and hooking it all up. And so it got to the end of Thursday and I was like, hey, so where are we at? And Kayla's I ran into a couple of snags, wasn't done. I was like, okay, so Friday morning rolls around, still not done. And I'm like, okay, we set this deadline for yesterday morning at like 9, 10 a.m. We wanted to have a round of ads being gathering data, testing. And so I'm like, what happened? And she's here in person Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then remote the rest of the week. So we, it was Friday, we scheduled a Zoom call. We got on a Zoom call. I'm like, walk me through what you do to do this. And so she starts walking through where she was at. And instantly I realized that this operating basis that, and she's a high producer, like she's smart as fuck. And if she's operating this way here, most likely this is not just a her issue. Most likely this is a people issue. And so what she started to do was walk through what she was doing. And I noticed that her Slack was open and it was constantly dinging. And even during that call, she's like, oh, hang on. I got to check this thing. I'm like, we are on a Zoom call right now going over a productivity thing. And if you have Slack notifications on, if you're constantly pulling yourself away to go handle something real quick, that's problem number one. And so what I'm going to walk you through here is where that conversation went. And I'm also have a, a guide here that I'm going to share with you how to get in in just a second. So ultimately, what we realized is that in the name of helping move things along, what a lot of people do, and even if you might be the CEO, you might be doing this too, is in the name of being helpful, you might be responding to an existing customer or client inquiry and responding to it as fast as you can and dropping what you're currently doing to go respond to it. And for example, in this particular case, we have one of our programs as a $97 a month membership. And there are certain tools and softwares that our, our students get access to. And one of them was, I don't know, there was a request for one of them and, and it had a challenge in getting it. And so one of our virtual assistants said, hey, I'm having a problem getting this thing out. Uh, and it was just one person, one time, and that inquiry had been there for 20 minutes. Kayla went to go have a conversation with a VA who then needed to pull in another member of our team. And now we got three people on our team handling something that wasn't urgent. Yeah, it was important, but also we say in our support tickets, like your support ticket will be handled within 48 hours. It's been 20 minutes. So in the name of fast customer support, a task that could very well have yielded thousands of dollars that I'm sitting here that like literally feeds the business with customers is put on hold to handle something that is a $97 person issue. Now, it's not about the $97. It's about the salary that I'm paying Kayla, that I'm paying the, our virtual assistant and another member of our team. And now we've stopped doing something that could potentially yield tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and potentially even millions of dollars. That's the feeder of the business that has taken my time and her time. And if you add all of that up, we basically dropped something that could potentially be worth hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars to if everything burned down with this client inquiry, we would issue a $97 refund, $97. And so let's assume the hourly rate is $35, $40. Let's assume the other team member is $20, $30. Let's assume VA is $5, $10, something like that. We've now taken two hours out of our time to postpone something that could make hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend easily a couple hundred dollars to handle a non-urgent $97 issue. And so my point is every time you go and spend time on something, you're spending money at the same time. So you have an hourly rate, right? And if you're paying a team, they have an hourly rate. And depending on the severity of what you're handling, that in itself has a value to it. 
And this was apparently news to everyone on the team. To me, it was in the common sense bucket. One thing I've learned is common sense is incredibly, laughably uncommon. And we literally went through a an impromptu training where I was like, okay, we need to severely change your operating basis because if this is how you're going through stuff in the name of being helpful, constantly needing to be there because Kayla's kind of like the glue that holds the rest of the team together. She kind of fills in the gaps, creates a lot of SOPs and is incredibly valuable. However, the efficiency level is laughably bad or was up until we made this shift. And so what we proceeded to do was walk through the setup of this funnel because there was all this testing and testing going on. And I, I noticed that when we were testing other stuff, which is like, yeah, I'm going back and forth with Rebecca and Heather and we're going back and back and I'm seeing all this like thread shit going slack. And I'm just like, for testing a fucking funnel, like all these test transactions, like why do you need to keep testing the funnel over and over again? Well, because the zap didn't fire, this broke, this, that, that did. I'm like, if I build a funnel, I build it once, I check it two or three times each step all the way through as thoroughly as humanly possible. It's very painstaking and tedious, but then when I test it, it either doesn't work because of some error that's outside of my control, in which case I'll just shoot a Loom video with a direct question to a support person or whoever can help fix that problem if I can't fix it myself, or it'll work because I took the time to do it right the first time. And what was happening in, in the name of speed, she was essentially putting stuff together, not checking each step, testing it obviously it was not working and we went through we were going to do a test and she goes and says okay we fixed that one thing let's do a test and i'm like we need to check every single step of the funnel and so we literally sat there on a screen share and i watched every single part of the funnel be tested to make sure that she understood how to think through something very thoroughly and it got to the end of that first check and she goes, okay, we're gonna do another test. I'm like, no, we're gonna go and check every little last step of the funnel again, from all the way at the top to all the way at the bottom everything so if somebody a sale gets registered in click funnels that fires off a zap that lead goes into active campaign they need to be segmented onto a list with tags if they take the upsell that needs to that automation needs to be added to our circle community and all these things need to happen we need to check to make sure that each step is set up properly so we went through once then we went through twice we found stuff on the second go around and so then when we tested it required one test the funnel worked and we were done now what people tend to do and what Kayla was doing is in the name of let's get it done and out the door she was taking essentially little bite-sized chunks of time to do a half pay attention to it version and then getting pulled off into something else multitasking maybe even listening to some YouTube video in the background then coming back to it wondering why it was taking so long and what I think a lot of people do is something very similar they try to get a lot of stuff done at the same time and they end up getting nothing done and they wonder why nothing's in the done bucket. And so what we decided to do is I took that call recording and I threw it in Claude actually with a prompt. I'll see if I can put that below this video. And I took the transcript of that training and I asked Claude to write me a checklist so that Kayla had a checklist or at least a prioritization list of how to spend her time. And in a way that we also could distribute it to the team because in the name of helping out, I've noticed that people essentially get pulled into problems and then they get to be busy working on problems that really don't matter uh, as they relate to higher priority, higher dollar value issues, right? And so essentially we segmented this into high priority tasks, medium priority tasks, low priority tasks. So we want to focus on the high priority tasks first before moving on to anything else. And so these are tasks that are directly tied to generating revenue and have a high potential impact on the business. So it, if there's your funnel that you're spending thousands of dollars a day on ads to, if that is not dialed in, if it's not hooked up properly, if you're running a test in this case, and that test is not ready to go, that test could potentially yield thousands, if not millions of dollars over time. And we got to get it going, right? Before we do lower priority stuff. And so if it's directly related to money, like we got to get that shit going, you know? Ultimately, we want to make sure everything regarding things that could generate money are handled first. Then from there, we go to medium priority tasks. And these are somewhat tied to revenue and have a moderate impact, but they could wait 24 hours. So when, if you submit a support ticket to our Whiting Solutions email address, we have an autoresponder that says your ticket will be handled within 24 to 48 hours. And so we know that every time we get a request, our customers, our clients are getting that notification. So we know that we don't have to jump all over it instantly if there is a higher priority thing to take care of first. 
So knowing that, as long as all the high priority stuff is done, then we can move on to the medium priority stuff. And so this would be like ensuring like all the social media calendars are full, support tickets are responded to and stuff like that. Then we go to lower priority tests. So not directly tied to revenue. They could wait 48 plus hours. And if not done, they might cost tens of dollars, whereas medium priority tests might cost hundreds of dollars and high priority tasks might cost thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, right? So low priority tasks, something that could wait might cost $97, 50 bucks on a, if a customer after buying a $27 thing immediately submit a support ticket asking for a refund or something and they can't wait 30 minutes like that's a low priority thing we don't need four people on the team i don't need to pay a thousand dollars in payroll to issue a 27 dollars refund in the next eight minutes when we have something more important to do this would be just things like responding to non-priority support tickets and overall just like longer term stuff than like organizing folders and files and shit like that another important point is when you're working on high priority tasks you want to block off time like all notifications are off. When I'm doing deep work, I constantly have a pulse on things. But when I say constantly, that doesn't necessarily mean I have my ad account open and I am looking at all my team's conversations in Slack while I'm writing a VSL or while I'm doing this YouTube video, right? Like I'm not, I, I segment it off. It's impossible to multitask, like physically impossible. And if you're awesome at it, congratulations. This is, this I guess isn't for you. I would definitely make sure to block off time and have dedicated time to where I'm only going to do this thing. And it might feel like it takes longer to complete that task. And it might feel like you urgently need to respond to stuff. But I can promise you, you don't. You really just don't. Anything can probably wait at least five hours. Anything, right? Unless your house is burning down, anything can probably wait five hours. Anything can probably even wait 24 hours. And so what you want to do when you're doing a really high priority task, something that's directly related to revenue, something that you know you need to absolutely do very well, which should be everything, is you want to make sure that you, but when you go through and before you submit it, I tell Kayla, I'm like, every time you submit something to me, like, hey, I'm done with the thing, check it out. I'm like, are you willing to bet your entire life's income for the rest of your life and your entire reputation on what you're about to submit? If the answer is yes, then we should actually have a real mon monetary bet but we've gotten to the point to where like she knows i know when she submits something that is actually really good and i know when she submits something that she just mailed it in called it done when it's really not up to the standard that at least we adhere to in, in our company and so when you're submitting stuff like that i don't care who it's to i i get the whole done is better than perfect thing but also you don't want to submit a bunch of bullshit to people you don't want to put out a bunch of bullshit content you don't want to put out a bunch of bullshit products in the name of done sure you might make some short-term money but all you're going to do is have a bunch of people know that you put out a bunch of bullshit and so that's at least my philosophy is i don't want that i want people to i want you to watch this video and be like wow that was helpful that was not bullshit and if you're if you feel like it was good let me know in the comments if you feel like it was bullshit let me know in the comments and i just tell kayla it's only complete something's only complete when not only will i go and quality control it check it out if i were to go and comb through the whole thing would i find any mistakes at all if you're unsure go do it again, go check it again. And it's only complete once you're willing to bet your entire career on it. And what I also shared with her that I'll share with you is that she creates a lot of standard operating procedures. And I'm like, well, I'm about 99% believing in how you do anything is how you do everything. I think it's at least a good thought process. It's a good idea to think with that, even though it might not be a thousand percent true. So I'm like, if you're creating SOPs for our team and you're creating it while multitasking, without checking it, without betting your entire career on its quality, and then you hand it off, no wonder you're getting pinged in Slack constantly because the fucking people that you created SOPs for are saying, hey, there's holes in this thing, I have a question. And then they need to pull her away. They can't do their job or God forbid they have to make an assumption, which will probably turn out to be incorrect. And so by rushing to create an incorrect SOP or a almost done SOP or a pretty close SOP, you're going to create more questions from team or clients or customers that's going to pull you away from the deep work time. 
So when you create something and submit it to someone else, I don't care who it is, it needs to be as perfect as you possibly can make it. And you will help future Kayla not have those types of situations where questions are constantly being asked because the resources provided are inadequate to answer those questions. That is incredibly important. And they need to essentially have no errors. And when you do things right the first time, it will feel like it takes longer. It will feel like a waste of time, but it will save you incredible amounts of time in the long run. And so I've linked to this guide below this video that's a little bit more detailed than what I've gone over in this video. But I really think that the more you think about how much is this activity that I'm doing right now actually costing me and costing the company if you work for another company and if you have a team and you're hoping to get the most efficient production out of them, you need to give them a framework that tells them how to think through stuff and tells them how to prioritize their time. Because after the whole, we were done and we actually launched the funnel thing, this test, I said, if you had just gone through and did what we did, and mind you on the Zoom call that we had, she pushed all the buttons. She knows how to do all this stuff but she wasn't doing it because she was constantly worried about what was going on over here. And so I said, how long do you think this would have taken you if all you did was like what we just walked through, which was about 90 minutes, two hours. She's like, yeah, probably about two hours. I'm like, okay. So it is now at that point, I think it was noon on Friday where we had started that at like seven, 8 a.m. on Thursday morning. So a whole day and a half, 36 hours. So an actual time spent in chunks. I'm like, how long have you spent like touching this thing, fucking around with it? She's like, I don't know, 12, 13 hours. I'm like, yeah, that's what happens when you multitask. And so that was a huge wake up call. And I would say if I was going to add one last thing to this, it's just speed of communication and thoroughness of communication that I found is incredibly paramount. And so if I'm unaware of like how she's spending time, for example, and she doesn't share it with me or she shares it with me in a kind of exhausted end of day report that I don't get to the following morning, I can't course correct. And especially with her being my assistant, she's incredibly talented, knows how to do a lot of stuff. I'm really trying to pour into her and make sure that she is the best that she can be. And that's what she's asked me to do as well. So I'm like, please send me updates of what you're doing and what you're thinking about doing next, because we need to readjust your prioritization barometer because there was a few slack messages where she's like hang on real quick i gotta put the funnel on pause because i gotta go handle this dashboard issue or something like that and i was like the fuck you do no we're not doing that no that is not a good use of time right now at all that can certainly wait and so already just it's just been a few days she's got it and i would just recommend highly investigating where are you spending your time and are you actually getting the return on time that you should be getting. And most people like to spend time on building shit that probably doesn't directly relate to sales and marketing or revenue, organizing stuff, thinking about stuff. At the end of the day, like you gotta really understand what are the high priority things in your business and what are the potential opportunity costs. Meaning if we didn't launch that funnel, the, during that day, let's say that funnel actually like outperformed the main control funnel that could have made two, three, four, five thousand dollars just that day right and so the opportunity cost is now it cost me that five thousand dollars it cost me everybody's salary to go handle a 97 dollar issue and so we just have this hugely lopsided value gap between what is the best place to spend time and what is the worst place to spend time so hopefully that video was helpful for you let me know also if there's anything that you feel as though has worked for you in terms of prioritizing time in the comments below and hopefully you watch whatever video that the youtube algorithm serves up to you next as well. And I will see you in the next one.